नमस्कार वेलकम टू द सेकंड यूनिट ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशनल बिहेवियर इन द फर्स्ट यूनिट ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशनल बिहेवियर वी हैव लर्न हाउ द मैनेजर्स इन ऑर्डर टू इंश्योर दैट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन अचीव इंडिविजुअल एंड ऑर्गेनाइजेशनल गोल्स शुड लर्न इंटरपर्सनल स्किल्स the managers need to know how the individuals and the groups in an organization perform and influence the environment within the organization the individuals are interested in achieving their personal goals as well as in the process they form the formal and informal teams and through which they try to achieve the organizational goals in order that the individuals and the groups perform in a directed manner it is necessary that the organizations have a well defined design and therefore organizational design as a subject as a unit becomes very very important the managers need to understand how to design the organizational structure which explains the role and the place of every individual in an organization the individuals to perform effectively must know what role they are assigned in the organization and how their role how their performance will influence the performance of the organization as a whole traditionally the organizational design was rigid very fle- very inflexible and we can say that it was a bureaucratic model of design wherein the command flew from top to bottom and individuals very rarely they knew what role they are playing in the organizational setup the power came from the top the orders came from the top and the individuals were not knowing what exactly they have to do in the organization this rigid complex and bureaucratic model of organizational design it led to less performance or poor performance on the part of the individuals as well as on the part of the organization as a whole things have changed since 1992 when india went for globalization the organizations have started realizing that customer focus should be at the center of any activity of the organization and customer focus customer satisfaction entirely depended on how the individuals and the groups and the teams in an organization they perform thus came the people focus of management and so now the organizations in the modern age in the information age they are placing more importance to the people in the organization people side of management has become more important than the bureaucratic model which prevailed earlier in the modern organizations therefore we see more emphasis on individuals in the organization people are taken in confidence in describing and designing their job and also explaining them what is their position in the organizational structure management is such a discipline that it relates to the individual and the beauty of this discipline is that right from the family to the bigger organizations the management can play a crucial role or we can understand the philosophy of management in our family also we have a design a structure where every family member has a role to play and where the individuals every family member understands what is the role that he or she is expected to play in a family decides whether the family really achieves the goals those are set for the family in a typically orthodox family as we must have seen the grandparents the parents they are the most important and the other members of the family are not taken into consideration while framing the goals of the family or while taking up any tasks within the family result was that there was conflict and the family goals also were not achieved 
look at today's families wherein every member of the family is given his or her due importance even a small child today knows what is the role that he or she has to play in the family and this has brought a more focused approach for the families to achieve the goals a same analogy can be applied to the organization a bigger family as we can call it and in this bigger family every individual is supposed to play a very very crucial role whether he is a top manager or whether he is a low person working at the low lowest ladder in the organization everyone has to contribute to the organization's performance this understanding on the part of the management that every individual is important in the organization has given rise to modern organizational design wherein every individual is given his role to play or understanding about what is expected from him or her to achieve the organizational goals this leaves us to decide and to discuss as to how the design of the organization is done by the management basically designing the organization is the task of the top management and the top management has to understand how to structure this organization make it simple and see that the communication flows smoothly at every level of the organization and that every person every individual in the organization clearly understands what is his job or what roles he is expected to play when he is performing within an organization for this unit we have certain learning objectives and we must know what we are going to learn through studying this organizational design unit the first learning objective for this particular unit is define organizational design and structure processes what exactly we mean by organizational design how it is defined by the management experts and how it is structured how the top management goes through the process of designing this organization organization then the another objective learning objective for this unit is identify environments and forces pressuring the structure any organization comes into existence in a set of given environment it is not working in a vacuum and this set of environment may be social political cultural economic decides what should be the design of the organization it is not only that the organizations are working in a given set of environment but at times these forces they are pressurizing the top management to redesign their organization for example in the information age the organizations will have to design and they are forced to do so the organizations in such a way that the information technology is used properly throughout the organization the competitors are redesigning their organizations and therefore the organizations the top management will have to think about redesigning their structure the third objective is describe the evolution of organizational structure as i said earlier that in the traditional method or in the traditional age before industrial revolution and even after that we had a very orthodox type of organizational design wherein the top management was in the commanding position from there to the information age organizational design how the evolution has taken place in the structure of organization that is our third learning objective what is organizational design what is organizational structure let us go to this first organizational design is the process of identifying and configuring the organization strategy and structure to achieve the mission and the goal every organization has its own set of missions and goal in order to achieve these goals in order to achieve the mission the organization has to design a strategy a strategy is the long term thinking is a long term policy of the top management designed to achieve the mission and the goals of the organization 
According to this strategy, the design of the organization needs to be structured and therefore it is necessary that first the top management decides what is the mission and what are the goals of the organization. Then they go to how to achieve this mission and the goals. They go for designing and developing the strategy for it. Then in order to implement this strategy, what resources are required? So identification of those resources is done by the top management. And then a combination of making a fit between the strategy and the resources to achieve the mission and goal the top management designs the organization. In short, this is a continuous process. Organization or top management cannot sit and say that now we have designed the organization's structure and so it is final for last or for next coming 10 years. This cannot happen because the pressures from outside, from the within the organization and also the mission and the goals of the organization, they are changing they are modified and the top management will have to review from time to time as to whether the present structure is suitable for achieving or for implementing the strategies those are designed to achieve the mission and goals those are set for the organization and therefore this is a continuous process and the top management will have to review the design of the organization again and again with reference to mission goals, strategy and the resources. Those are used for implementing that strategy. What is organizational structure? Organizational structure is the formal relationship between the groups, departments, systems of the organization. Formal organizational structure defines how the departments will interact with one another. What is the relationship between the two departments or two groups and the systems of the organization? For the benefit and for in order to achieve the mission and goals, division of work is necessary as we have seen in the first unit. When division of work is done, the top management creates number of departments in order to hand over, in order to give the specialized task to be done by the specialized group of individuals. This is for the convenience of the organization in order to achieve the mission and the goals. But at the same time, it is necessary that all these functions, all this work is properly coordinated so that the entire work is carried out towards a particular mission or goal. And so it is necessary that the top management creates a structure in which it is clearly defined as to what is the relationship between the two departments or the various departments those are created in order to achieve mission and goals. This is absolutely necessary in order to have a coordinated effort. As I said, though the departments are created, though various groups are created, ultimately everyone is working towards one goal and that is organizational performance. In order to ensure that every group, every department works in close coordination with another department, these are interdepart interdependent departments and therefore they should work in a similar direction and this similar direction is given through the organizational structure. It is necessary to accomplish the strategic goals on organization has to do two things. As I said right now, divide the work to be done among its members. An organization may require 200 people, 500 people, 2000 people, depending on the size of the organization. It is necessary for the top management to divide the entire work that the organization has to perform among its members. And while dividing the work, it is necessary to see that there is a fit between the person and the job that is being given. So person job fit is to be seen while handing over the work among the members. Once this work is divided, the next task is to coordinate the work. As I said earlier, 
coordination of this work is necessary because every member of the organization is working towards a common goal and so while creating the structure the top management first will have to divide the work and then coordinate the work while designing the organizational structure therefore the top management will have to see to it that the entire work is properly divided as per the person job fit theory and number 2 that effective coordination effective uh, understanding between these members is ensured in the modern times as i said there are the organizational structure is mainly focused over customer satisfaction customer satisfaction is at the center in today's scenario in the earlier days customer was not the king whatever was produced whatever services were rendered the customer had to accept everything we still remember that in order to get a vespa scooter the customer had to wait for one year or six months or so and that too whatever design was given by bajaj we had to accept it today this is not the case if i am not getting a particular scooter i can go to another manufacturer who is ready to give me scooter immediately this is just one example and likewise today's customers they have ample choice to go to any service provider or any manufacturer to meet their needs in this scenario if the organizations they have to survive in the competitive world they have to keep customer satisfaction as a central point while designing the organization now if we keep customer satisfaction as the central point then a formal organizational structure needs to be created that ensures team work and individual competence is given due regard every individual has his or her own core competency based on that whether the top management is able to create appropriate teams using the core competencies supplementing each other and create teams which will lead ultimately to customer satisfaction and so the formal organizational structure needs to be created which takes into account individual competencies and supplementing those competen competencies and creating a team work that leads to customer satisfaction of course one important aspect of all the entire organizational design is to be considered and that is the financial performance or financial outlay that is required to create this kind of organizational design and so the top management will have to consider within the limited financial support or financial outlay that they have at their disposal how to create a structure that will ultimately lead to maximize the customer satisfaction when we are talking about all these things customer satisfaction core competency and all these things it is important that the allocation of the work is done according to the core competency of the employee every employee when recruited and is working with the organization has its his or her own core competencies that is the employee is good at something and that something needs to be identified and the person must be given that particular work where the person is good at identifying this core competency this specialization of the person of the individual is the task of the top management the top management has to understand how to divide the work among its members look at the nature ob has not come from heaven it is by observation of the surroundings look at the nature the nature also follows the rule of division of labor every component of the nature is given a specific role to play similarly in an organization every member has 
a specialization is specialized in something and that something needs to be understood for example if a person is good at calculations let him put in the accounts department give him the charge of preparing the final balance sheet now this understanding of the core competency of a person a person has a analytical mind is good in collecting the data analyzing and interpreting the data put him in the market research department for example now this is how the core competencies can be identified and division of labor or division of work can be done in the organizational design one has to the top management based on this prepares what is known as organizational chart everyone must have seen the organizational chart we see the top management is given the arrow is there then there are the md then there is again an arrow then there are heads of the departments a graphical representation as to how the coordination of the various activities will be done in an organization and the lines which are seen shown in the chart they are the control lines and connecting boxes every box how from the top to the bottom how everyone is connected how the top management is connected with the managing director how the managing director is connected with the heads of the departments or the vice presidents or presidents as we call them today in the organizations how these presidents then are connected with other members in the department so the chart shows graphically that various parts or boxes those are shown in the organizational chart that they are connected they are coordinated and thus organizational design if we look at this specialization and organizational chart we can say that organizational design refers to the process of creating a structure that best fits the strategy and of course in today's time technology environment it is necessary that every organization has its own strategy its own long term way of thinking to achieve its goals strategy is at the soul or is the soul of any organization and in order to implement this strategy the top management has a very effective tool in their hands and that is the organizational design so organizational design it is the process by which the organ the top management creates the organizational chart divides the work among its members and considering the modern technological environment decides as to how every member of the organization will be placed the organizational chart or organizational design has many features organizational designs at times are very complex the initiate the intricate part of the departments and interpersonal relationships that exist within the work organization when we create the various departments the relationship between these departments the relationship between the individuals working in those department these become very very complex and here the organizational behavior or the practitioner of organizational behavior has to play a very very crucial role and so in organizational design automatically a some part of complexity prevails comes in and the hr manager or the organizational behavior practitioner has to guide has to monitor control the relationship that flows between the various departments and the individuals working in those departments centralization is another part another crucial part which may create some problem in creating or in monitoring the relationship between the individuals the degree to which formal decision authority is held by a small group of people that is centralization in an organizational design where the decision making power 
is in the hands of a small group of people we say that it is a centralized organization for example in a family when we say that the decision making authority is in the hands of at the top that is the father or the grandfather we say that this family is highly centralized family especially at the top of the organization when this is centralized we say that this is a formal centralized organization in such an organization in such a design relationships interpersonal relationships they become even more difficult or even more crucial as against this there is a decentralized type of structure where participatory decision making is encouraged decisions are taken with the help of people who are to implement the decision and their suggestions their ideas are also considered and the decisions are made collective decision making is encouraged in such a design at times interpersonal relationships are better as they seem and so whether the organization has a design that gives centralized or that gives centralization more importance or it goes towards decentralized or participative collective type of decision making that will decide or this will entirely depend on the top management philosophy how the top management looks at this the promoters of the organization the people who sit in the board of directors of the organization they decide whether it has to be a centralized or a decentralized we have to avoid both the extremes totally centralized or totally decentralized there are advantages and disadvantages of both but the crucial point is the strategy to achieve the mission and the goal of the organization it needs to be implemented effectively if that strategy needs that a certain degree of centralization is necessary and a certain degree of participative decision making is necessary a combination of two can be made and so it will depend on the situation in which the top management is framing the organizational design the traditional design of organizational structure normally was the top management the middle management and the technical group and the authority flowed from top to down and then this structure was supported by technical support staff and administrative support staff administrative support staff and technical support staff they were kept outside the structure of the design however it is today's management they do not keep these two outside the structure today when the departments are created they are created in such a manner that technical support and administrative staff they are merged with the entire structure of the organization we must say that in the simplest form any organization should function for should essentially perform four functions this is necessary for the organization first to survive and then to grow in a competitive economy these four functions are whatever may be the design whatever may be the structure decided the organization must produce a product or a service which has value customers value that product or service customers need that product or service organizations as i said are not working in a vacuum they are working they are performing in a given set of environment and unless the organizations are able to produce a product or a service which is needed by the customer the organizations will cease to function otherwise and so it is necessary that if the organization has to survive or grow they must understand what the customers need and that product or that service must be provided to the customer the customer must have value for that product or that service second function is the product must be manufactured or service rendered by employees 
who rely on paid work salaries and wages are paid to the people who produce or who manufacture the product or the service and that is the major source of income for majority of the employees in order to ensure involvement of the employees in the work that is being assigned to them maybe manufacturing of a product or rendering a service unless that is their major source of income it is believed that the employees may not put their heart in the work and so many organizations today are taking bonds from the employees that they do not have any other source of income or they do not employ themselves outside the organization and so the second thing is the product or the service manufactured or rendered by the employees who are the paid employees of the organization the third is the product and the service is manufactured or rendered but it has to be properly marketed customers must know what product is manufactured or service is rendered by that particular organization when we say for example when we say mahindra and mahindra a customer must know what they are manufacturing if the customer doesn't know what type of vehicles they are manufacturing the customers may not buy what is being manufactured by mahindra and mahindra similarly if you look at a service sector or service render unless the customer knows what services are rendered by hdfc bank what variety of services are rendered by hdfc bank the customers will not come to the bank it is necessary that the services rendered or products those are manufactured are properly marketed are made known to the customers and that the customers value those services and those products and so in today's scenario marketing of the products or of the services is equally important the fourth one is financial resources are needed in order to develop and create the product or services those are provided for whatever all these functions that we are talking about employing people manufacturing a product rendering a service marketing that service creating value for that product or service for all this the organizations need financial resources and so the organizational design must be such that it helps the top management to generate the financial resources those are required to undertake all these activities in today's scenario in the global environment today we have networks and virtual structures when we are talking about earlier organizations maybe 20 years back maybe 10 years back in india particularly we are talking about a traditional organizational structure wherein physically people come to a place work together departments are seen in today's modern organizations networks and virtual structures are prevailing the network structure is a set of strategic alliances that all organization creates with the suppliers distributors manufacturers to produce and market a product a manufacturer sitting in nasik may have a network with a manufacturer sitting maybe in germany for manufacturing of a particular product and this kind of network associations this kind of network alliances today have become very common it is not necessary that physically you should be present there but with strategic alliances with these kind of organizations many products can be manufactured or services can be rendered then we have virtual organizations still we have gone one step ahead and virtual organizations today they are seen around us a virtual organization is composed of people who are connected by video teleconferences the internet and computer aided designs these are the systems 
and who may re- rarely come to each other these people may not see each other but still they are working with each other and this is the beauty of today's virtual organizations and so in modern times we see that the networks that is strategic alliances and virtual organizations they have become very common now while designing either modern type of organizational structures or traditional types of organizational structures it is not that today we see networks and virtual structures which means that they have totally replaced the traditional structures no the traditional structures still many organizations go with them whether to create that kind of a structure or whether to create modern kind of structure will depend upon the size of the organization whether it is a small size organization a medium size organization or a large scale organization it will depend mainly on the technology that is used if the technology is very high end technology the organizations may have strategic alliances through networks the environment political and economic environment within a particular country will decide what kind of structure they should have and the degree of lo- globalization a country like india when we have entered the global scenario very recently in last two decades or so the level of globalization as compared to the developed country is less and therefore the structure will be depending on the level of globalization that this country has likewise this structure should give the end result whatever is these are the uh, parameters or these are the uh, conditions on which the structure will be decided but ultimately any design any structure must give best return on investment that is what the investors want it must achieve the goal attainment of the goal that is being set by the organization and the most important important is what is the performance of every unit in that particular organization and so when we are talking about organizational design from organizational behavior point of view the organizational behavior practitioner will have to go through all these intricacies the thinking and the philosophy of the top management the strategy that is being designed by the top management and the mission and goals of the organization and then this will lead to the interpersonal relationship between the individuals and there comes the role of the organizational behavior practitioner and so when we talk about the organizational design it becomes an integral part of the entire organizational behavior philosophy as such thank you